This is Snow is Falling for Violin 3. I want you to first look at your entrance at measure 5. It's where you start Arco. You just have to be careful that when you come in, it's only mezzo piano. So when you set that bow, you're going to want to set it a little bit lower in the bow because it's a long note, but maybe a little closer to your balance point, but definitely near your fingerboard. We're supposed to crescendo throughout this note, which is a little bit awkward because it's on a down bow. So as you're playing, you're just going to want to try to move your bridge a little bit, or sorry, your bow a little closer to the bridge and add a little weight. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then in measure seven, you're going to join the first violins with their eighth notes. So one and two and three. The trick is getting from measure five and six into seven. So as you're playing measure five and six, you need to already start counting your eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three, four. On these slurs, you wanna also wanna make sure you're using a lot of bow. In measure seven, if you don't use a lot of bow, you're going to have a really hard time playing the string crossing on the up bow from D to B on your G string. With a full bow, that'll make it a little bit easier. When you come in at measure 13, you now have a different rhythm pattern. So you have one, two, and three, four, and and you're going to see that but both of the eighth notes are marked with staccato dots. So on the quarter note, you'll pull a little bit more bow, so it's a fuller sound, but then very light, short, stopped bows on those eighth notes. Which takes you to measure 15, which is a tricky measure. So in measure 15, you're playing three notes in each of those slurs, and the rhythm is quarter note, eighth note. The same rhythm you just played in measure 13 and 14. One, two, and three, four, and. But you have a string crossing in this slur. So again, make sure you are using a lot of bow and that you are trying to prepare that third finger while you're playing the first. <laughs> first finger set on my D string, I'm already on my G string getting my third either set or just placed above the tape so when I cross strings I can very quickly set it down and I'm not scrambling to find it. That'll help you make a very smooth slur. Then look down to the next line. This is measure 19. It's the first measure of that line. And again you have the same type of rhythm pattern with slurs and you're supposed to accent the first beat and then you're supposed to decrescendo from a forte to a mezzo forte. So in this one measure, there's a lot going on. Also on the third beat, you have a D. I do want you to play a fourth finger instead of an open, because that'll help you avoid another string crossing and will help you play the correct dynamic level. So there we have a first finger, open, second finger, then place your fourth. Two, zero. One, two, and three, four, and. Again, I'm using my full bow so that I can get the string crossing. If you use any less than that, you're going to have a really hard time playing these string crossing slurs smoothly. Everything after this pretty much repeats a lot of the same bowings, notes, rhythm patterns. Um, just look at 21, you have the same thing at 25, at 39, and at the end where we have these bell tones. So you have half notes with accents on them. So at the beginning of each note, you want to pull your bow. You want to dig in a little bit more to create that accent. And then it's forte, so you still want a full sound, but you can ease up a little bit on the bow weight. It'll just help those notes pop out. Um, the other instruments who need to hear that beat one and beat three very strongly, it will help them. And it creates the sound of the bells that we need. So I'm gonna play through your entire piece for you. I have the metronome set to 80. 
starting from the beginning. One, two, three, four. And if you're still having trouble with those string crossings, the best way to practice them is to one, put your bow down. Let's look for example at measure 15 and you want to just try to pluck. And just keep repeating that pattern over and over until you pretty much have it memorized. You're not really looking at your fingers and you can set without checking your tape. Then your next step would be to practice that left hand and air bow. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and just repeating so your hand and your arm are getting used to that motion. You can also just practice some open string slurs going from the D to G. Make sure you're not using your shoulder. You're kind of using that elbow, changing the angle, and letting your wrist move with your elbow to help you get that string crossing clearly. Then the last step would be to slowly play the slur. And just keep repeating it. Once you can play it cleanly, slowly, speed it up a little bit. A little bit more you could even try it with a metronome um, these string crossings are tricky but the more that you just repetitively practice them in many different ways so that you can focus on that motion it will help you